Hello and welcome to Minecraft. So today I want to talk to you about building, how important it is to some people, and to show you some ways to improve your building technique. I'm going to take two examples of builds that I've completed on the Voxelbox server. Firstly this white temple, and secondly this house. So building something in Minecraft usually falls down to two categories you have to watch out for. Exterior and interior. Exterior being the outside and interior being the inside if you didn't know. So we're going to start off with the exterior as you're almost always going to want to build this first and then shape the interior from the size that you create with the walls. The white temple, the first build I made on the voxel box, is a great example of good exterior design. To start with I built a circular base and then began extruding the walls upwards, adding glass between pillars and using the white marble as wall structure. Half stone steps are a very very useful block for, used for lining, roofing, flooring and in this case I used them to define each floor from the outside um, as well as the roofing and even the flooring in fact so I used them for everything. <laughs> um, so let me tell you that my initial idea was not to have this huge tree vine around the building but nevertheless I did not forget um, about the building structure. For example if this was real life the pillar blocks would be used to support each of the floors taking the weight off the ones above it and if we look inside we can see the ceiling supports coming out from the edge of the room to support the floor above on each level. This is one of the main aspects of building I want you to take away from this video. The idea of thinking about what you're building in real life and how and if it would actually stand up against gravity. Okay, so after building the main exterior structure I noticed it was a little too white overall. Um, adding red, red gilding to certain parts of the tower adds a small flair to it all and essentially wraps the tower in a nice pattern. This is actually the second aspect of building I want you to remember. The fact that a plain white wall looks less aesthetically pleasing as, let's say, a white wall with trim on the edges and something in the middle like a design or a pattern. Um, this also applies to roofing, of which you will see later on in the video. So this tower was half done once I've added the red to it. I knew that I had to add something else to it, otherwise it would just be a generic white tower temple, which like a lot of people build. So seeing that the, um, the great dark green colour of grass and leaves in the voxel box texture pack looks so good up against the bright white marble of the tower, I essentially extruded that colour and used it as a non-linear, non-structured trim. And by that I mean the way the plants grow is not structured. Well, it is to some extent, but you know what I mean. Um, how branches grow sideways, in and out of corners, and break through windows, etc. After doing all of this, I was left with the temple on its own, as quite a nice build in some people's perspectives. But then the addition of the tree growing inside it kind of seals the deal. Um, the contrast between structure planning and rampant growth is something we see in many video games and other things, and people generally like the idea of nature retaking and enveloping what is theirs. So I've completed the exterior and I'm quite happy with it now, so let's go inside. Some builders find the inside a lot harder to decorate than the outside, and I guess that's why they're called a different job names, you know, architects and interior designers. But if you can do both really well, then you'll feel even better about yourself. And to be honest, in Minecraft it's not that hard. What you need to do first is think about the structure of the building, just like in real life. You can't decorate a building if it's just going to fall down when you put the walls up. So a good place to start is the ceiling. Most buildings are built by the method of putting horizontal beams across vertical columns. And in this case you can see these half stone steps going across the ceiling, like I showed you just a minute ago. They actually stop before reaching the middle because they're actually just there for aesthetic design in this case. But because the pillars 
Yeah, because the pillars are holding each, up each floor. But in many cases, they will go from one side of the building to the other, and then the floor will be built on top of it, having the line of strength in the flooring being perpendicular to the way the beams are going. This all creates strength in the building and will ensure that it won't fall down. So now we move on to the main features of the interior. Start off by putting in the main things you want, like here I've got this huge shard of glowstone going through the middle. So I put that in first. I also went downstairs and into the basement, created a basement and added a temple-like structure, including an altar and chairs. To be honest, a temple isn't a very good example of a great interior because a lot of cases it's just pillars, chairs and altars that we've all seen before and they're very easy to build. Um, but I'll come onto the interior house design in a bit where you'll see a much better example of interior design. So I've put the main things in now and I would start to build up aesthetically pleasing doodads in each floor varying them on each level so you don't end up with each uh, floor looking the same. By the way, doodads are little things you find like in Counter-Strike, like cans, desks, chairs, litter bins, things that add detail that are not essential to the game. So I go around adding detail to each floor, like these flowers and the grass, leaves and the reeds um, acting as vines in these case gradually increasing in number as we go up. Then I just put a bit of water on the side for added colour and the build was complete. So now we come on to the second example of this video, a house that I very recently finished and as a result has turned out much better than I expected. It's actually what sparked me to create this video. So first off, I started with the shape of the house. Uh, now here's the big thing to remember, never build square houses. Well, in some cases, square a square is appropriate, but for the vast majority of things you build, don't build them square. Square is like the worst thing you can do in Minecraft. Even though Minecraft is made of squares, don't build a square. Okay? Okay. So now that we've got that out of the way, I made the shape of my ground floor like kind of like a square because that's the shape of the plot I was given. But I did things like cut away the corner to make a nice retracted entrance and curve the corners because that generally makes it look nicer. Now we've got the base down and then I began the uh, ground floor walls taking design from the nearby buildings each town or city in Voxelbox has some kind of theme or design going through it and you have to stick to that more or less if you want your building to be accepted in the town. So I did the black outline first which is basically the main design feature in all of these buildings then placed pillars evenly around on top of that remembering that there would be the vertical support to hold the building up then determined where the windows were going to go and in the back of my mind placing each room on the ground floor like I was thinking where the kitchen would go on this side and I put a big window here to look out while you're doing the washing up and on this side for the lounge and more on this side for the hallway and um, a long tall window here on the corner for the staircase because I thought it would look nice to look out of the house when you're walking up the stairs then I went and filled each gap with planks and sealed it off with good old half stone step trim on the top and then did the same for the upstairs walls. Now I said I would comment on roofing earlier on so here you can see I utilised the pattern of the other buildings on the roof of my house and also to add light to the top floor. So I'd done the walls and now I thought about the inside, inside structure. You can see here the horizontal wooden beams that I put across the first floor to hold up the floorboards and then these dark log pillars to line the openings of each room. A good thing to note that the strongest parts of your house in real life are actually the doorways and the stairs 
because they take the most weight from the floors above them. So this should be shown in your Minecraft builds to make them better. In this case the stairs are a spiral so they're actually attached to a fence pole which provides the support. After completing the structure of the house I filled in the top flooring with wooden planks and separated the room sizes. Downstairs there's a lounge, a kitchen and a toilet and upstairs there are two bedrooms. In Minecraft a lot of things are scaled down depending on the size of your build, how tall you actually are, um, your two meters in height and aesthetic design because you can't fit everything from real life into a Minecraft house. So I started with the lounge, uh, I put a big TV because I like TV with surround sound, bookcases, storage, drinks, cabinet, all the kind of stuff that you'd find in a lounge in real life. Um, the voxel box texture pack obviously helps a lot when decorating an interior because it's designed for essentially that um, that use, um, providing drawers, uh, carpet, cups, drinks, loads of small detailed textures perfect for rooms. The kitchen includes a sink with a tap, workspace, storage, a dishwasher and a fridge, as well as this centre workspace which adds a bit of modern, modern design to the uh, room. Levers specifically you can be used in many ways, like you can use them as taps, uh, shower heads, coat hangers, and loads of different things. Going upstairs now to the bedrooms, it's a good idea to start off with the bed placement because that's the largest feature in the room. Think of how big you want your bed to be and plonk it down. Make an indent in the wall sometimes helps. Um, make room for any wardrobe space that you want to put in, perhaps a walk-in wardrobe with doors and coat hangers. And uh, perhaps a mirror and chairs, drawers in the rest of the room. And then once you've done all of that, you can add paintings, buttons, other small things. Make it night and put torches in nice places. Oh yeah, and make sure to use lighting well. Don't just put a torch on every pillar in your house because that would look stupid and it would just be far too bright. Here in the lounge I deliberately didn't put torches near the TV because I knew it would cause glare when watching it. Small things like this will make your house even better. And that's about it altogether. That's a completed house. Go outside and add some flowers, maybe uh, a path, some flower pots inside, a doorbell, sign, mailbox, other stuff, maybe a garden outside. There's lots you can add. So there we go, a relatively quick introduction to building. You can take away these tips and use them on your server or single player. You don't have to build on the voxel box or use its texture pack even. Just make sure you take into account these big points made in this video and you'll be building like a boss in no time. So I'll finish off this video with thanks to you guys for just watching this. I'll probably be doing more of these types of videos in the future, giving tips on Minecraft building and even art and drawing in real life. I think I might do a few tutorials on Voxel Sniper and how to get the best out of it, as well as some others like how to install the essential building mods, how to use and configure them. So that's all for now, I'll see you next time.